Hi guys and welcome back. This video is a little bit different from our usual videos because this is a pre-recorded video which is an excerpt of a new course that we're about to release on Udemy. The new course is about web development using HTML, CSS and Flask and Python. And in this video specifically, we're talking about the HTML content categories or how HTML elements are grouped into different categories and sort of what that means for the elements themselves and how they behave and so on. So this is something important to know about so that you know how to use the different HTML elements that exist. Let me know if you like the format of this video, if you want to see more of this course, and I'll be sure to upload a few more videos for you guys to check out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Let's get to it. HTML elements are grouped into content categories based on what they're used for. And the categories are important for understanding what is valid markup in HTML. We'll see some examples of this in the next lecture when we talk about nesting HTML elements. Some categories that we're going to talk about are subsets of other categories. For example, all elements which fall into the phrasing content category also fall into the flow content category. This is going to make more sense as we go through this lecture. We're not going to cover all of the HTML categories here, but there are a few that we should know about. And you don't need to remember every category or every element that is in each category but knowing that there are different categories will help you make sense of why some elements behave differently from others. All right, that's enough of that. Let's get started. So the first content type that we're going to talk about is flow content. Typically, these elements are text or embedded content, or they contain that directly underneath them, like images or videos or just plain text. Most HTML elements are part of the category of flow content, and there's a few that are not flow content, but most of them are. Flow content also has multiple subcategories, and then elements can be grouped into those as well. So this is more or less what this looks like. You've got this massive group of elements that are called flow content, and these are basically all the elements that affect what the user sees. So this is most HTML elements. So inside flow content, then we've got other subcategories that are very important. For example, the sectioning category of elements. The sectioning elements are used for grouping other elements into collections. So this is what that means. Sectioning elements are special container elements that are used for grouping other elements into meaningful collections. For example, the article element, the section element, or the nav element. Notably, the header, main, and footer elements are not considered sectioning elements, they are flow elements. We're going to talk about article, section, and nav in a lot of detail later on in this section because they are some of the most used elements in HTML. Because they're used for grouping other elements into meaningful collections, we normally use them to separate our pages into different parts. As well as sectioning inside flow content, we've also got heading content. So the heading content is used for defining titles of a section. The heading content category is reserved for the six heading elements from H1 to H6, H1 being the most important title of the page and H6 being the least important title of the page. The heading elements can only contain phrasing content inside them. So let's take a look at the final piece of the puzzle in here, which is phrasing content. So just to make sure that this is clear, sectioning, heading, and phrasing content are all subcategories of flow content. So phrasing content are plain text elements or elements that become plain text if the associated resource is not available. So let's take a look at that. So for the most part, phrasing content is text and the markup of that text. For example, emphasis elements or strong elements and so on. If it can be inside a sentence, the element is likely phrasing content. For example, you may put images inside a sentence if the image is related to that and you want the sentence to be somehow associated with it. So images are uh, phrasing content and so is audio, video, and there's a bunch of others. An important test for this is that if the associated resource, for example, the audio file that you're trying to load is not available or it can't be retrieved, then the audio elements become text. 
and so that they can be displayed in the web page in a different manner. So that is a good test for determining whether something is freezing content or not. All elements which accept freezing content inside them are expected to have a descendant that contains some plain text. And that plain text is expected to contain something other than just white space. So it needs to have some letters or numbers inside it. Okay, so just to recap, we've got the flow content category, which basically contains all HTML elements, except a select few that don't affect what the user sees on the page. Inside flow content, there are multiple subcategories and the elements of each subcategory can behave slightly differently or have slightly different properties. We've got, for example, sectioning elements that are used for dividing or grouping the other elements into meaningful collections. We've got the heading content, which is used for titles. And we've got phrasing content, which is used for plain text or elements that become plain text if their associated resource is not available. Again, just to reiterate, you don't need to remember every element and what content category is for, but knowing that these exist and that different elements are part of different categories can help us understand why they behave differently, why sectioning elements behave differently from phrasing elements, for example. All right, that's everything for me for this lecture. Thank you for joining me in this one, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something. The course is already available on Udemy, and at the moment it contains some of the older material that we're still in the process of completely updating. Over the next few weeks, you're going to see all new material coming into that course. So feel free to check out the course and buy it using the link in the description below. As usual, thanks for watching. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel as that really helps us out. So thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.